Good morning, welcome back to another video, and today is another day of the Zero to Gold Cap Challenge. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so for today, you guys actually said in the comments yesterday, because I asked you a question, whether you wanted a TSM guide to restocking and crafting, so to speak. So here it is. Starting off with all of this, all we have to really do is make sure that we have what we want to craft in our bags. So for more simplicity's sake than anything. Um, we're going to be starting this off by literally crafting what is profitable. So you go on to one of your professions, I've chosen cooking, and I've crafted anything that is profitable, so to speak. So obviously I would want to do that, and I want to craft a baked void fin at the moment. And to be honest, if you find things that aren't actually profitable when you're actually starting this up, but sometimes do fluctuate whether or not they are good enough or not, then I would consider crafting one of that item. So the Adubless Delight, I will want to craft one. The same with the Baked Void Fin, the Ghastly Goulash, the Grilled Nasher, and the Kebab. So all of the Heroic Visions type of food, and then all of the others. So I'd probably make one of everything. If you don't have them already into a TSM group. Now, Going in with this, I've got my set of all of my stuff that I've gathered on, and that is like fragrant ca caca via uh, uh, my biltong, and also my mechdowls, mech and also I've got a couple of other things such as bear tartar, the seasoned loins, and honey pot pie. Now these ones are just examples that you can use this for basically anything. And we will actually get into how we actually go about doing this. So that being the case, let's get into the creation of the group. So when it actually comes to the groups, obviously I've already got mine already set up besides cooking. Now you want to go to your base group and then just create, press the plus button in order to start making your group. You can rename it like this. I've done, for simplicity's sake for myself, I just go cooking crafted and I always put an underscore don't know why it is um, but it's just a form of habit so then all you do is press enter and then you will see anything that is not attached to your TSM in here so I want to select the biltong the better tar I don't want the contracts to do honey pot pie the mech the mech the big mech food and also my seasoned loins because they're the things that we're wanting to actually post so that being the case we are then going to add these items. So what we're going to do now is they are in their group for cro cooking crafted. And what I want to do for this is create a subgroup within this. And I'm going to call it BFA crafted or BFA cooking crafted. So it just makes it a bit more easier to then sift through and all that jazz. So when it comes to BFA cooking crafted, I can do that. And then I'll go back up to this main group and I'll add another one in, which, which I will have as miss for miscellaneous cooking crafted. And that one is for things like the bear tartare where you aren't gonna sell that much of, but you wanna be able to keep a nice supply on because moving forward, you'll see why this is. So we've made the subgroups within the cooking crafted and we're gonna go along and do the BFA ones first. So we'll go into the subgroup for BFA cooking crafted. And if you see the parent group right here, should say five of them because I've got five in my bags which I've added to the cooking crafted. The next thing that you would want to do is select any of the BFA ones. So the seasoned loins, the big mech, the honey pot pie, the biltong, I'll add those into the BFA cooking crafted. And also with the miscellaneous cooking crafted, I'll add the bear tartare. So this is just a basic overview on how you do it, obviously. And then we're gonna head over to our operations because that is basically the groups set up because we've just grouped them into our own categories. Now it's time to actually create the crafting method. Now, go it, now going into your operations, you will want to go down to crafting. Basic essence of this is by just pressing the plus sign, which we will create a new operation. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this one the BFA Cooking Crafted. And then all you have to do is press enter to save the name. And then when you actually get down to this, we'll actually say what we actually want. So for the BFA type of stuff, we want to have a minimum restock quantity. Now, BFA cooking materials sell relatively fast. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I've got at least 
30, a minimum of 30 of everything in that BFA cooking crafted group to be on the auction house at any one time. So I'm setting the minimum as 30. And the maximum I want to be set at about about 120. So I want at least 120 of those on the auction house at the same time as well. This is because they sell relatively fast, especially on BFA days. So like the resets that I'm gonna want those BFA crafted stuff to be on there. This does change depending on what you're actually doing your group for, but at the moment we're doing it for crafting. So just a quick overview on what we're actually talking about. And I want to actually do the minimum restock quantity as 30 for my cooking for BFA stuff. And my maximum is 120. So I want a maximum of 120 of those on the auction house to be crafted and a minimum of 30. So I need them always to be on the auction house all the time. So I'm going to set the minimum profit, just leave this checked. You can flick this off and flick this on, but you're going to be wanting to need this. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to say roughly around about 110% and that's going to be crafting. So 110% crafting. Why am I saying this? Well, when you're actually going into TSM and you're actually going into your profession so to speak so we'll go into our lovely cooking part of our TSM and when it comes down to crafting it will tell you how much your crafting cost is which is 108 gold for the baked void fin. Now this will take this into consideration and when we are wanting to craft these we want to make sure that we're making over the crafting amount for crafting this so to speak. So I want, you can always do it at 100%, but it isn't guaranteed that you'll be making a profit. So what is most commonly used, and obviously I've learned this uh, throughout the time through Samadam and all that jazz. So uh, the basic concept of this is about 110% crafting. And this has worked so well for me so far, and it works really well. So what it actually will, mean by 110% craft, crafting is that it will craft it for the crafting cost and make sure that we are not going to lose any gold by crafting it. That being the case, we'll be crafting it for that, but also it also will take into consideration the 5% auction house fee with that as well. So just make sure that it's 110% crafting. If you're just beginning on it, you can play around with it later on once you understand your price sources. But a basic concept of this is 110% crafting because you don't want to lose any gold when you're crafting this. The next thing is override methods. We're not going to actually touch these. You can override it if you really wanted to, to change the craft value method. But I just leave it blank, so to speak, just to make sure that we're actually doing that. Now, if you do run different realms and different characters, you can select which character can be assigned for each of these crafting things. I don't bother with this because I don't really need to use it all that much, but it's something you may want to consider. The last thing that you're going to want to do for grouping up your crafted stuff is by going into your group management and then going down and finding your group. So for this one, we're going to go to cooking crafted, BFA cooking crafted and that will go into the main group and then the subgroup. So we'll want to select that one. So if you want to double check it's on, just click off and then click in and it should say BFA Cooking Crafted in your operations. So we've got it linked with that group for BFA Cooking Crafted right here. So this one is now assigned with all of these. So what will happen now is when we actually go into our lovely TSM once again and we clear this queue, we can go into our groups Make sure that you are selecting these because they are deselected at the same time. When, when, at the same time, once you've done this, you press restock. So when you go into professions, you press groups, and then all you have to do is press restock selected stuff, and it will come up with what you need to craft, and it will tell you your estimated cost and the estimated profit that you will receive from your investment. So obviously setting out 110% crafting, we know that we're gonna make a profit regardless when we're actually doing our operations within the TSM setup. So with the BFM cook, 
with that with the BFA cooking crafted we can make sure that we've got enough of this stuff on the auction house and also we're also going to make a profit on making these now I generally find this to be a really easy way in order to make gold because more along the lines of a simplistic approach when we're actually wanting to restock when we're doing other farms so you want this to be completely automated so you know what exactly what you need to craft and what you need to replenish instead of going through every single profession and just wasting your time doing that when you could have the groups set up and it's not that hard we've just run through it in about five minutes but now let's get into auctioning because obviously these are going to go by the default for that so what we'll go do is go into auctioning and we'll go into cooking crafted it's the same principle as crafting. If you haven't seen my noob's guide to TSM, you can go back to that and we'll tell you how to make a group and operations for posting, but we're gonna run for it really quickly on this part right now. So I've already made the group in auctioning called Cooking Crafted, and this will craft this will post all of my groups that are assigned to it. So what I want it to do is I want it to have Cooking Crafted for BFA, and I want it to post the miscellaneous cooking crafted as well for the group management. And what we're gonna actually wanting to do is just move over to the posting section. And we're gonna set it for 24 hours. And also we're going to set that the price cap, post cap to 5,000. Um, I doubt I'm ever gonna make 5,000 of this product, but I do it as the max because I don't really care how much I've got on the auction house because the the cooking crafting method will assign me with all of the stuff I want. And obviously we can change that in the crafting section if we find more to go are, are needed to be posted. So that being the case, let's move on to the next thing, which is how many do we want to keep in our bags? I don't want to keep any in my bags because I will do this on the daily, but you can do this if you are going to make a mass amount, like a weekly uh, cooking crafted restock. So say you've got a day off from work, you can then do your replenishments on that day. And therefore, you could always keep stock in your bags if you wanted it. I generally don't want to because I do it on the daily. But, but that being the case, you ha do have that option for that. Along with that, you do have your don't post after this many expires. Um, once again, I'm not going to touch that because I don't need it. And we're going to go down to the price settings. Now, when we're actually setting our pricings, I've taken, I found that Samadam's setup for the posting through the cooking operations, it through the crafting operations actually works really, really well. So. Why try and invent the wheel when something already works very well as well? So what we're actually going to do is we're going to set the minimum price to 110% crafting. So we're always going to make a profit on top of the crafting cost. That will also take into consideration as well for the price cut from the auction house as well. So we're always going to be making a profit for like crafting all of this stuff. So that being the case, we're also going to set the minimum price for 110% crafting. And for the maximum price, we're going to set it to a 500% crafting. This is because the fluctuations between different products do vary, especially when it comes to new X packs like Shadowlands. When it comes out, you want it to be able to adjust accordingly. So setting it to around about 500, as what Samadam suggests, actually works relatively well for fluctuations in the price market. And then the normal price, we always set at 115% crafting due to the fact that we want it to sell for a little bit more because we're goblins and we want extra gold if it's not getting undercut like crazy. So for that instance, we're also gonna set the 115% crafting for that to go on there. And that is basically how you do your crafting stuff. It's really that easy. You make a group in your TSM of miscellaneous and all that stuff. So we'll run through it once again. And we're gonna make the, we're gonna do a copy of this one. So I'm going to just copy the BFA crafting cooked and it will say one and then we're just going to say miscellaneous so miss miss for short so miscellaneous crafted and I only want 10 on the auction house at one time that I also want at least 30 on the auction house because it is miscellaneous it's bare tartar 
it's not going to be flying off the shelf like a crazy man and that means we don't need that much on the auction house. I will be making some adjustments to my Drums of Fury apparently. But um, the minimum profit is once again 110% crafting just to make sure that we're going to be making some profit on top of that. And we're also going to set the group operations to the miscellaneous group for cooking crafted. And then it will be right underneath there. So that being the case, that's all fixed and we've already done the posting to that. So that means they're all grouped in their subsections for different things. And then we can close that down and then we can now sell the, send this over towards our character. Now you can use groups in order to send over to your another character. So I could select Cooking Crafted. And this is just a little side note when it actually goes to this. I always go into my mailing as well and go into a sending over a cooking method. So I can say where it's actually going to be sent to what character is it going to send, be sent to? And to be honest, for this one, we're just going to use a default because all of this crafted stuff will get sent directly to my banker, which is giblet. So what we'll do is we'll say giblet. And my target character is giblet. And that's all I really need to know because it already has all of my different things attached and assigned. So the cooking crafted will get attached into this. And all we'd have to do is just set it up in here with the apply operations for that. And then we can send that over to do the direct character and all that jazz. So we could send that mail all the way over to giblet and it will just send all of them over. So aside from that, that is basically what is actually being done. And then it just sends over all of that stuff that we've just crafted over to giblet. And the reason is that we didn't actually send put this one into this group for crafting. So all we'd have to do if we're gonna add a new one in is just go into our subgroup and we just add the fragrant cool vaca. And then that will send, I'll send that over by mail selected group. So you select your group for cooking crafted and you just send it over and it gets sent to your primary. Obviously if you've got multiple bankers, this may be helpful by setting up different operations, but really when you're actually doing your mailing option, for your groups, you just go with the default, set your banker's name, and then all you'd have to do is just go into your mailbox, and when you've got your groups, you just send it all over to your selected character by selecting your group and then saying mail selected groups, and it'll post all of it in those groups over towards your banker, so you don't have to think about it, it just does it. So that being the case, that is the guide on how you actually create your groups and your crafting method. It's really that straightforward. Once you've actually got it set up, you can clear this queue and then you just go, I want to go into my groups and we've got it all selected right here. And I just press restock selected groups and it gives me a list of all the things that I need to replenish at our price caps and all of that jazz. So I've done that for my inscription, I've done it for my alchemy, I've done it for blacksmith, I've done it for all the professions. And at this moment in time, it's pulling in a load of gold. And set at 110% crafting cost, I'm always gonna be making some gold on top of this, even with the Sapphire Panther Cubs. So that works out really, really well. So that being the case, without further ado, let's get into the gold for the day. Now, I must admit, it is a really simple method in order to set up and it will save you so much time just on the daily instead of going through, oh, today's going to be cooking day, I'm gonna focus on that. Why don't you just make your groups up and then you can just press restock and then you know what you're gonna make a profit on, what you're not. So take the time, a couple of hours, just to set up all your groups for all of your professions and then craft that. I even have it for, for bags when it comes towards my characters. Now, for obvious reasons, I am not in a capital city, but it's no problem because I've got my Bruto Saw. Bruto Saw! But that being the case, let's get into the gold for the day, which is, and we actually have our things. And the gold for the day is 198,689 gold. Obviously, we set up our restocking groups, and now we can now restock all the stuff that will make us profit on all of our things and we'll make a lot of gold through this. So when it comes to things of note for the day, we've sold a lot of netherweave bags for like eight gold. 
but we also sold a flying machine for 3,291 gold. We also sold 20 tomes of Quiet Mind for 3,375 gold, and we also sold 20 War Scrolls of Fortitude for 3,494 gold, and we also sold 20 War Scrolls of Intellect for 2,648 gold, as well as we've also sold all 30 of our Drums of Fury, so we're going to up that to maybe about 50, and then we can keep doing that. So I'll just go into my groups, like we said, and we'll just edit it, so to speak, to match that. Because if the drums of if 30 drums of fury are gonna sell, let's make it 50, because we want to get to that equilibrium of where they will sell and they will not sell at the same point. So you're not making too much, but you're not making too little. You're just trying to find the center point of how much you can maximize, and that just takes a little bit of trial and error. So my next update for that for the drums of fury is going to be upping that to 50 and seeing if they sell in a day and then up that to 100 or 200 and it's all that jazz. So it would just be something along the lines that we're going to want to fluctuate with going forward. But we also made 1,841 gold from Drums of Fury, which cost us literally 200 gold to make. And we, what we also did was we also sold the Uncanny Combatant Saturn Boots for 1,593 gold. Along with that, we also sold Grunt's chest piece of the Quick Blade for 2,647 gold. We also sold the Uncanny Combatant Satin Boots once again for 1,673 gold. We also, we also sold two Vial of the Sands for 52,576 gold a piece. So that's 100k right there for two of those. And we also sold a Sapphire Panther for 23,513 gold a Ruby Panther for 22,572 gold, and a Jade Panther for 22,383 gold. Couldn't get the words out there. But 198,689 gold, that's pretty damn good. We're, I'm just going to open all of that in right now. And that's boosting us back up again. And now we've set up all of the crafting groups. I'm so glad I actually took the time to sort this out again. Um, because running without it is a pain in the ass because you're constantly having to check all of your stuff. But aside from that, we are seriously going to be making a 10 ton of gold because we are currently at 299,178 gold and that's pretty damn good. So the next thing is just to post it on the auction house and the best way in order to double check that we've set it all right is by... Oh, We've sold some Yesra Lion seeds for 417 gold. And we're just going to make sure they're selected in our cooking crafted group. And we're going to run the scan. So what is actually done right there is it won't post the mech dowels for the big mech for, for, for the group because it is below the minimum price of 110% crafting. It is invalid. Now you do get that type of thing and it will hold on to it until it is profitable once again and then it will just post it. So once it is profitable again it will post it You and therefore you will still make a profit. But oh, that this only really happens once you actually start uh, crafting it in general and sometimes you do get this to pop up and pop down and you it will hold on to it until it's profitable once again and then it will post it to the auction house so we're just going to post all those to the auction house and the big mcdowell's are going to be staying in my bags until they are profitable once again now obviously i could post those to the auction house if i really wanted to but for obvious reasons probably not going to be doing that i'll just hold on to them until they become profitable again and then we can see how much gold we're actually going to make. So currently at the moment we've got 1,229,000 gold our auctions and now we can and the glory about doing the restock methods and the crafting methods are the simplicity of just being able to go into your groups, press restock of all of your things that you need. It will make a list for crafting. You just press your gatherers and you gather all the materials and then you craft it and that's you done for the day. And as long as you keep up together with this or you could do this a once a week thing, you can then spend your time doing other things because it's doing all of the math and everything for you 
So then you can focus on other farms to pull in more gold. So you could pair this with a gathering farm with your crafting and make even more gold overall. So that being the case, that is pretty much all I have to say for today. Have a wonderful rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow.